Now let's go back over to the lateral side. And this is the only case we're going we're gonna to seek to understand today. And I want to I wanna focus on a few terms. Now we're on, the, we're on the other side, and I'd like you to notice that as we scroll, the meniscus really never comes back together. There's always a connection to the bow tie. That shouldn't happen, right? If that happens, you've got meniscal dysplasia. The most common type of meniscal dysplasia is in the, either an incomplete or a complete form of discoid lateral meniscus, which this is. But I'm not so interested in the dysplasia right now. I'm interested in some terms. Okay, we've established that there is a dysplasia, but look at the signal. The signal is not just this sort of bunny ear signal in the outer third. It keeps going into the middle third and the inner third, and it is equal in intensity compared to the outer third. That can never, ever happen. You are not allowed to have equal signal, if that's a word, in the inner third compared with the outer third. Disallowed. Does that mean it's surgical? No. Does that mean it's abnormal? Yes. Lots of people have signal in the inner third. In fact, everybody does who's over age 60, because everybody over age 60 has a cleavage tear. But we're not going to operate on it. So you've got to learn to distinguish. You've got to learn when to hold them and when to fold them. Because if you fold them, once the meniscus is out, you can never put it back in. There is no procedure that works where you can put it back in. Another important aspect of assessing this signal is the signal should never continue running all the way through. It should never run with equal intensity through the body. Let's see if I can convert back over for a minute. I'll try it. So let's see if that occurs here. Well, it isn't quite equal. It starts to faint in the middle third. So I don't think that phenomenon is very well illustrated here. But believe me, this tear is communicating all the way to the front. You might say, well, there's a tear here, there's a tear here, maybe they're not connected. That's possible, but that's stupid. That's stupid stuff. You got a big giant tear that's the same shape as the one in the back, and they're not connected? That's silly. Of course they have to be connected, even if you don't see it. It's just common sense. And you already know you have a dysplastic meniscus. And if you're a little educated, you know that meniscus splits right in the middle into two parts. So with a little bit of knowledge, which can sometimes be dangerous, you know that this entire cleavage signal has to be one thing. So don't try and over manipulate it. Don't try and overthink it. It's a meniscus that's turking into a tur it's turning into a turkey sandwich. What's happening is just is this. Let's see if my drawing tool works. Here it is in purple. Here's my discoid meniscus. The tear is just going right down the barrel, the center of the meniscus, right through those weaker collagen bands that are normal, where, that conduct synovium. It's a little looser in there. Unfortunately, in these dysplastic menisci, that loose area starts to come apart. And if you put it on the table and you turn it like this vertically, turn the meniscus vertically, the thing will go like this. This half will fall that way, that half will fall the other way, the meniscus will fall into two pieces. The two pieces of bread from the sandwich fall apart, and you got just a piece of turkey in the middle. It's horrible. I'm saying, oh my God, what do you do? Nothing. Currently, the state of the art is there is no good treatment for this scenario. But that's not why we're here. Unfortunately, at some point, the meniscus blows. You've got to leave it until it blows, and then it has to be resected. But there's more. Let's talk about what's happening in the front. In the front we've got, as we said, this little tiny round globular thing, which is a meniscal pseudocyst. Why is it a pseudocyst? Because it's not lined by epithelium or synovium. It's lined by fibrous tissue, as opposed to a true cyst, which is epithelial lined. So we say there's a perimeniscal small pseudocyst of meniscal origin that is, you know, four by three millimeters in size. Sometimes you'll get them in the meniscus. That's okay. Just describe it. Sometimes out of the meniscus. When they're really, really big, you may have to fix this and then resect from the outside. So you may have to go outside and inside. So then it really starts to matter. If it's not a meniscal tear, like a ganglion, it'll do something like this. It'll make a big mass, and it'll go above the meniscus. So the tail goes above 
or the tail may go below, but it doesn't go in the center. So it's like belly buttons, ganglia, belly button Audi, Audi, whereas meniscal pseudocyst, belly button right in the center, it's an innie. 